हे गाइस वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन आवर चैनल दैट इज अचीव आईएएस सो फ्रेंड्स एज यू नो दैट ऑन आवर चैनल वी आर टारगेटिंग द एग्जाम ऑफ सिविल सर्विसेज एंड फॉर दैट पर्पस वी हैव स्टार्टेड मल्टीपल सीरीज ऑन आवर चैनल दैट टारगेट योर प्रीलिम्स एज वेल एज मेंस सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट आवर करंट अफेयर सीरीज इन व्हिच व्हाट वी डू वी डेली डिस्कस एमसीक्यूज फ्रॉम योर करंट अफेयर्स पर्सपेक्टिव सो टुडे इज 10th अक्टूबर सो लेट्स सी व्हाट आर द क्वेश्चंस फॉर द डे द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज consider the following statements with respect to juvenile justice act 2015 first death sentence or life imprisonment can be awarded to child if they commit heinous crime second the act mandates setting up of juvenile justice boards in each district with a metropolitan magistrate and two social workers including a woman so which of the above statements is are correct let me tell you friends that only one statement is correct and that is second so answer would be b so uh, explanation is that uh, delhi court has set aside the order of a juvenile justice board directing a child in conflict with law to face trial in a murder case as an adult so please note this uh, this is very important case so recently uh, this uh, uh, this has been done that uh, uh, it, uh, he will be not be tr uh, tried as a as an adult so salient features are Uh, children in conflict with the law all the children below 18 years equally except that those in the age group of 16 to 18 can be tried as adults if they commit a heinous crime so it means uh, that uh, uh, a child of 16 to 18 years uh, who commits a lesser offense a serious offense may be tried as an adult if he is apprehended after the age of 21 years so heinous offense attracts a maximum minimum of 7 years of imprisonment so serious offense attracts 3 uh, to 7 years of imprisonment and a petty offense is treated with 3 year imprisonment so no child can be awarded the death penalty or life imprisonment so children need need of care and protection so it calls for setting up of child welfare committees in each district with the chairperson and four other members who have experiencing uh, experience in dealing with children so the committee decides whether an abandoned child should uh, be sent to care home or put up for adoption or foster care so these boards uh, are set up in each district with a metropolitan magistrate and two social workers including a woman so the uh, these juvenile justice boards will conduct a preliminary inquiry of crime committed by a child within a specified time period and decides whether he should be sent to rehabilitation center or not so then uh, the board can take help of uh, psychologists and psychosocial workers and other experts to take the decision now let's move on to the next question next is which of the following is not a minor tribe in the state of magalhya a bodo kachari uh, b hajong c khasi d koch so we have to choose that which of these statements uh, which of these options is correct let me tell you friends that the answer is c that is khasi so organizations representing five minor tribes in magalhya have recently asked the chief minister to intervene in move to exclude them from the provisions of sixth schedule of the constitution so five more minor tribes uh, these are bodo uh, kashari hajong koch man and raba so they are clubbed as unrepresented tribes for nomination magalhya uh, autonomous tribal council so these councils are in the names of garo chanti and khasi and the states three met, uh, uh, these are the uh, states three uh, major matrilineal communities so recently a sub committee on the amendment to the six year due constituted by magalhya state govern, uh, government decided to recommend to the standing, standing committee of parliament that the, uh, the removal of unrepresented tribes from the amended special provision so currently the, the members of these tribes are nominated to the autonomous autonomous district councils so this is magalhya's bid to ex, uh, exclude unrepresented tribes from the provisions of sixth schedule of the constitution has left minor tribes ag so it is believed that the proposed amendment will deprive some of the sts of their constitutional rights in the district councils and these minor tribes are indigenous to magalhya and uh, they have been living in state from much before its creation uh, uh, in 1972 so it will deprive them of the opportunity to be represented in the autonomous district councils as it will not be possible for them to get elected on the basis of adult suffrage so six schedule is basically uh, a schedule that uh, governs the administra administration of four uh, northeast states that is assam magalhya tripura and mizoram <coughs> Now let's move to the uh, third question. Third question is consider the following statements related to Satnami rebellion. First, the Satnamis were a sect of sacred religion. 
Second, in 1962, they rebelled against the mighty Mughal Empire. So we have to choose which of the above statements is correct. Let me tell you, friend, that uh, uh, only one uh, statement is correct, and that is second. So solution is B. So, uh, so Tsunamis uh, were basically they were a militant sect of uh, Hindu worshippers, and they found uh, they uh, it was this sect was founded by a, a saint named Birban in 1657 in Nanol in Haryana. So major religious activity of this sect is to, uh, is to chant and meditate the true names of God, especially Rama and Krishna. So this sect thought to be an offshoot of Rav Ravidasi sect and comprised of lower strata, strata of the Hindu society, particularly leather workers, sweepers, carpenters, goldsmiths, etc. So the followers of this sect kept their hands shaven, thus called uh, heads shaven, the, thus called mundias, and abstained from liquor and meat. So religious path of the Satnamis is called Pothi. So revolt of 1862, uh, uh, in 1862 they rebelled against the mighty Mughal Empire. So revolt uh, triggered when a Mughal soldier killed a Satnami. So Satnamis killed a soldier in revenge, revenge and in turn Mughal soldiers were sent. So Satnami attacked Narno, the main township in the area, destroyed the Mughal garrison and they even set up their own administration. So uh, there is friends, uh, uh, there is mistake here. Uh, this this is not 1862 but it might be uh, there is a mistake of year so not a second statement is not also correct so answer would be neither one nor two so please note that I'm not able to recall the year in which it was formed sorry for the mistake so rebellion was crushed when uh, Aurangzeb himself took personal command so Obviously, that would be the time of, I think, uh, that would be 17th century. So now let's move to the next question. Next is World Report on Vision is published by A. W. H. O. B. UNICEF, uh, C. Food Agriculture Organization, D. World Eye Foundation. So which of the uh, uh, following uh, answer is correct? Let me tell you, friends, that the answer is A. So the World Report on Vision is a report of W. H. O. So it has, it was, its first uh, World Report on Vision. So key findings are 2.2 billion people have vision impairment or blindness of which over 1 billion cases could have been prevented or have yet to be addressed. So the burden of eye conditions and vision impairment is not borne equally. It is often far greater in poor people living in rural areas, those with low incomes, women, older people, people with disabilities, ethnic minorities and indigenous populations. So this highlights the minute aspects of inequality that pervades in, uh, in human society. So the unmet need of distance vision impairment in low and middle income regions is estimated to be four times higher than in the higher income uh, income regions. So you can uh, read about uh, more details by pausing the video. So main causes are basically uh, aging population, changing lifestyles and limited access to eye care particularly low in low and middle income countries are main among the, uh, the, the are among the main drivers of the rising number of people living with vision impairment. So other main drivers are myopia, diabe diabetic retinopathy and then late detection. Now let's move on to the next question of the day. Next question is comprehensive national, uh, sorry. Comprehensive National Nutrition Survey is conducted by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in collaboration with A. UNICEF, B. WHO, C. Food Policy Research Institute, D. D none of the above. So which of these uh, options is correct? Let me tell you friends that uh, only one statement is correct and that is um, obviously uh, one option will be correct and that is uh, A. That is UNICEF. So basically this nat National Nutrition Survey, it is a comprehensive survey first ever survey that has been connect conducted by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and the United Nations Children Fund. So it is comprehensive and it is a cross-sectional household survey, uh, survey covering more than 1,20,000 children and adolescents in both urban and rural areas across India. So it, 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 the basic aim of it is to assess the national prevalence of biological indicators for example, uh, micronutrient deficiencies, subclinical inflammation and worm infestation and prevalence of overweight obesity along with information on body composition, cardiometabolic risk, muscular strength and fitness. So it was implemented in all 30 states of India during uh, 2016 and 18. So it, it in included population groups, preschoolers 0 to 4 years, school age children 5 to 9 years and adolescents 10 to 19 years. So information is useful for understanding the factors that affect the health and nutrition of children and adolescents across countries, diverse geographies and population. 
so the it is the largest uh, uh, micronutrient survey ever implemented globally and used gold standard methods to assess anemia micronutrient deficiencies and bio markers of non communicable diseases so you can pause the video and can check this is a comprehensive survey and it is very important so it is quite lengthy so it would consume a lot of time here if we started discussing so now let's move to the next question next is e mitra is an initiative of which state government a rajasthan b karnataka c tamil nadu d maharashtra so friends the answer would be a rajasthan so e mitra is an initiative of uh, rajasthan so it is an initiative that aims uh, at uh, it is a basically ambitious e governance initiative of government of rajasthan so it is being implemented in all 33 districts of the state using public private partnership model for convenience and transparency to citizens in availing various services of the government and private sectors under a single roof at their doorsteps using an e platform now let's move to the seventh question of the day the seventh question is 51 or guess c was the uh, first exoplanet discovered orbiting a sun like star goldilocks zone is the habitable zone around a star within a planetary surface that can support liquid water and hence have the potential to host life so which of the above statements is correct let me tell you friends that both of these statements are correct so this uh, 51 pegasi b is an ext extra solar planet approximately 50 light years away in the constellation of pegasus so it was the first exoplanet to, to be discovered uh, uh, orbiting a main sequence star the sun like 51 pegasi and a made marked breakthrough in astronomical research so it is a prototype of a, for a planet a class of planets called hot jupiters now let's move on to the next question next is global competitive index is released by a world economic forum b world bank c imf d none of the above so friends the answer is world economic forum so recently it has been released so a uh, global competitive index uh, it was launched in 1979 and maps the competitiveness landscape of 141 economies through 103 indicators organized into 12 pillars so pillars uh, which cover broad socio economic elements are institutions infrastructure ict adoption macroeconomic stability health scales product market labor market uh, the financial system market size business dynamism and innovation capability so for performance is that india has moved uh, we can say moved down 10 places to rank 68th so india was ranked 58th uh, last year so it is among the worst performing brics nations along with brazil so ranked even lower than india at 71st this year so india ranks high in terms of macroeconomic stability and market size while its financial sector is relatively deep and stable uh, despite the high delinquency rate which contributes to weakness uh, weakening the soundness of its banking system so innovation in, in innovation india is well ahead of most emerging economies and on par with several advanced economies so concerns and wave ahead for india is that major shortcoming is limited ict Uh, that is information communications and technology adoption poor health conditions and low health healthy life expectancy so healthy life expectancy uh, uh, where india has been ranked 109th out of uh, total the 141 country surveyed for the index is the one of the shortest outside uh, uh, africa and significantly below the south asian average a ratio of uh, female workers sorry A ratio of female workers to male workers of 0.26. India has been ranked very low at 128th place. So you can read up more about it by pausing the video. Now let's move on to the next question. Next is consider the following statements. First, the Hindu Kush Himalayan region is considered as the third pole after the North and South Pole. Second, it is the uh, it is also the world's largest store of snow and out ice outside the polar region and the source of ten major rivers and therefore particularly sensitive to climate change. So, which of the above statements is correct? Let me tell you, friends, that both of these statements are correct. So, India has to work with China, Pakistan to gauge the impact of climate change. So, this region, that is Hindu Kush Himalayan region, is considered as the third pole. So, it has significant implications for climate and data gathering in the region is sparse. so to better gauge the impact of climate change the imd has decided to co collaborate with meteorological agencies in china and pakistan among others so it aims to aims at providing uh, climate forecast services to countries in the region so it will be on the world meteorological organization and alongside forecasting weather over long periods the regional centers would provide data services training capacity building research and development 
So now let's move to the last question of the day. Last question is graded response action plan seen in news is related to A. Air pollution, B. Plastic pollution, C. Education sector, D. None of the above. So friends, its uh, answer is quite easy and that is A. That is air pollution. So graded uh, response uh, action plan is basically uh, it, it was seen in news uh, it, it has been recovered by Indian Express of yesterday so soon some stricter measures to fight air pollution will come into force as part of this gridded response action plan so as per the plan measures aimed at stopping the use of diesel generator sets will extend beyond Delhi to the NCR where many areas see regular, uh, see regular power cuts so measures will be incremental as pollution rises and it is expect, expected to uh, 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 reach uh, and it is, uh, it, is, it is expected to rise as winter approaches. More measures will then come into play depending on the, on the quality of the air. So it works only as an emergency measure. It was approved by Supreme Court in 2016. So plan does not include action by various state governments to be taken throughout the year to tackle the industrial, vehicular and combustion emissions. So when the air quality shifts from poor to very poor, the measures listed have to be followed since the plan is incremental in nature. So has it been helpful? So that is a quite contentious issue because this is only a we can say uh, uh, a, a kind of uh, a, a, uh, we can say it, this is a kind of responsive plan and not a pre preventive plan. So this is all about friends today's discussion. So uh, if you like this discussion, if you like the MCQs, then do ensure that you like it, share it with your friends. And lastly, friends, we also have a Telegram channel, the link of which is shown on your, on your screen and will also be provided in the description box. So here on this channel, we have more than 13,000 subscribers that follow us. So if in case you want to remain in touch with various initiatives that we are running for the C purpose of CSC preparation, then you can join this telegram channel and also through this telegram channel you can access the public resources that we have for the purpose. So if in case you are willing to join then do ensure that you check the description box and lastly friends you can contact us at 896-892-0720 or make and mail us at achieveias21 at the rate gmail.com for any queries or doubts and lastly friends if you want to subscribe to the pdfs of these mcqs then do ensure that you check the descript, uh, uh, description box because the subscription link is given there so obviously there is a minimum fee that has been kept for the purpose of this and that is rupees 99 per month and that has been kept solely for the purpose of our motivation so that we people can remain, remain motivated to help you people so if in case you are interested do ensure that you check the description box and join using the link so this is all about today's video have a very nice day ahead